Hello friends! Welcome back to another video on the Husky Squad Doggo Life channel. I'm Victoria. I'm hanging out with the entire Husky Squad, Yuna, Nikolai, and Kimari. And today I'll be sharing with you my favorite go-to compact camera for dog photography. If you like dog lifestyle videos, you found the perfect channel for your dog parenthood. Be sure you subscribe here to Doggo Life, turn the notification bell so you never miss a video we post here. Be sure to watch the entire video because I'll be sharing with you my top three tips for dog photography that I've been keeping in mind and doing since we started photographing our dogs. If you've been using your smartphone, your iPhone, your whatever you have for photography or photographing memories, it's great. I have tons of those too. But honestly, having a nice camera to take lifelong memories, take those beautiful pictures that you can cherish forever, you can even print them in big, is so, so important. You look back at those years from now, 10 years, 15 years from now, and you're gonna be so happy that you did that. We've been doing it for so long, way before we started Husky Squad. Granted, I've been doing professional photography for many years, but having all those pictures from the squad, from our pups, JC and I, it's just, there's nothing like it. Those pictures are so treasured and it's so worth it to have a nice camera to take pictures from everybody that you love. And this is why I highly recommend having a camera. Okay, let's get a few things out of the way before we get into our favorite setup for photography. Number one, this video is not sponsored. I've been doing photography for so many years, professional photography, way before we started photographing our dogs and I have been really enjoying the Canon brand for so many reasons. We've tested so many different brands over the years and I tend to come back to Canon so I have a strong familiarity with the brand and this is why you're gonna see Canon throughout this video so just a heads up I love the brand people ask us all the time on social media what cameras we use to photograph our pups so this is why we're making this video but this video is not sponsored now given that we have been doing professional photography way before we started photographing our dogs so I would have been using for years large DSLRs with their amazing lenses. So you look at this setup, this is a Mark, and then this huge lens with it. This is actually a Tamra lens that I really, really like. But if you can only imagine how much these two things weigh, and this is just two of the lenses and the body, so it's quite the size, right? So this is my setup for pro photography I've been doing for a long time. I have a great case, I can put all the equipment in there, and it's this camera is amazing. I will not give this camera up until I can find a replacement that I love equally to this large camera for professional photography. Whether I do portraits, if I do real estate architecture, you name it, this is my go-to camera and it's my baby. It's my tanker, but it's my baby. So when we began taking pictures of our pups and ourselves, JC and I, I found out that we had a problem. What that problem was is size and weight. This thing is huge and it's extremely expensive too. So there's a lot of things that come with having this camera. I can't just put it into my purse and my little day pack. Taking it back country, it adds to the weight. There was just a lot of things and we were just dealing with it because I was so biased to using this camera because I love the results of this camera and all the lenses I have with this system but i realized that it's pretty much not impossible but what happens because of that is i don't take our camera with us everywhere so what did i end up doing taking pictures with my iphone and as a photographer especially that was really hard to do because i look at this beautiful environment and i want to capture those memories and i pull out my iphone and i take a picture great i mean they're not bad but it just didn't cut it right it did not cut it and when we had to compromise weight or on daily hikes and daily adventures, I just couldn't carry this thing around. This requires a whole setup to take around with you wherever we go. When we realized that we needed change and we got this little guy, 
everything changed for all of us. That was like the best decision to alleviate all the problems that I had to use this camera every single day like I wanted to. So have a look here. This is the Canon Mark IV. This is my Canon M50. This is the one I carry with me all the time. Just look at the size difference. It's amazing. This was such a big life-changing experience once we got it, especially when you look at those little lenses that come with it. Actually, JC's using, after we got the M50 for me, JC bought his own smaller compact camera to film. He's actually filming on it right now, also a Canon mirrorless. Those are both mirrorless cameras. And we have these amazing lenses. This is the telephoto lens, it's kind of a small, it's not a big telephoto, but this is a nice extended lens. This is a macro and JC is using the other lens that's approximately a two thirds the size of this one. And that's all we have. It's so lightweight, I can toss it. I know it sounds scary, but I'm doing that because it's a lens. But I mean, just look at the difference. <laughs> It's incredible. The size is just, it's mind blowing. And this is one of the most important things at the waist. Gosh, this is so heavy. And this is so heavy. This is a 1635 and it's still ginormous. And this is a 2470, it has to be because that's my favorite one. Yep, 2470. And this one is a, I always forget because I'm still getting used to these numbers, an 18150. It's a really big lens, right? But it's so compact. And this is a macro and JC has the, the one that came with the kit. So we both fell in love with this mirrorless system and it's proven to be so beneficial. And I'm, I'm really, really liking the setup. Before I get into the details of this camera, I just want you to know that everything we talk about in this video, all the products we mention is going to be listed in the description of this video and in the first comment. Those are affiliate links and by using them you support our channel, it won't cost you anything extra and you'll also get to see as we update the list all the time with new lenses or new equipment, whatever we get. So be sure you go check it out here in the first comment of this video and you can always find it on huskysquad.com. So here are the key features I was looking for as a professional photographer in a small compact camera that I can fit into my everyday life. Size was the most important piece to get started with when it came to looking for the right camera. This is small and compact. This is my everyday pack. I use it when we take the pups walking, our everyday hikes. This is my pack I use for going out on dates. I wanted something that I can use all the time without having to have different packs because we're quite minimalistic. And this pack has everything that I need. And on top of that, I can just pop in this camera. I have a soft pouch on the bottom, the camera, the lens, probably three, four more lenses, small water bottle, snacks, wallet, everything fits in here. It's just, it's perfect. And I could not do that with my other camera. So this was an absolute requirement. And this backpack I've had since 2020 has been able to handle this camera, no problem. This is not even a super expensive bag, but because it's so lightweight, it fits in perfectly. It has the right compartments in here. This was an absolute winner. Obviously weight is another factor. This camera, even with the bigger lens on it, is so lightweight and because of that, we've taken so many more pictures of the Husky Squad. I have photos of them all the time, thousands. We only share some of it on social media, but I have so much more because we can just put it in anything and anywhere. I can even hang it on my neck and feel fine. It's not a problem. Thanks to this camera, I've taken so many more pictures of us as a family. So this Canon N50 is a mirrorless camera, that's what they are. These are built to handle interchangeable lenses and this was so important to me. There are other cameras out there, they're more point and shoot or bigger zooms and they're quite amazing, they have their own benefits, but I really like having specific lenses for specific shots and having interchangeable lenses you can just pop off and put another lens on it was an absolute must for the system. When you have a lens that you're kind of stuck with, the digital lenses that's built onto the camera itself, it's not as adaptable to different situations. Sure, they can work out great, but having a camera with interchangeable lenses is a really good investment. 
Canon by now has great options for their M series lenses. I really like their setup. Honestly, I keep this 18 150 on my camera most of the time because it covers these super close range pictures. I can even take a picture right here if I wanted to. And it also covers when we're out on the trail, they're a bit in a distance, and I want to catch them in their natural environment without interfering. I can zoom in just enough because it does go to 150. It's such a great lens and I really like the way Canon is bringing those different lenses to this lineup. When it was newer, it was a bit more of a challenge, but by now I drool over the options that's out there. And if you really want to, you can get an adapter and attach, oh, I put it away already, and attach my larger Canon lenses to it, but I've never had the need for it. The variety they have with these lenses is really, really good by now. An eye cup. That was really important to me. As a professional photographer, I've been framing my photos through an eye cup for so many years and it has such great precision benefits and especially benefits you when you're in bright light. And there's so many cameras out there today that they don't have that eye cup anymore where they're just using the LCD screens to shoot. And that's fine. I probably use it maybe maximum 5% of the time. But using an eye cup, you get a lot more precision and framing and you don't get that bright daylight hitting your screen where you can't see what you're doing. Not all cameras have that today and I really wanted to have it and this M50 does. Let's add to the eye cup. The eye cup is actually electronic and that is such a good feature to have because first of all, when you shoot, you actually get to see preview of your photo inside the eye cup of how it's gonna look like so you get to see if it's too cold if it's too warm if the brightness if it's exposed properly all of that you see that right through the eye cup because it's digital and another thing that i really really love and also given that we shoot so much outdoors with the squad is that it has an eye cup preview after you take the photo so when you look through the eye cup you can see the photo that you've taken how it turned out you can even zoom in up close i never had that with my dslrs and this is why the mirrorless just wins this is a new category i mean it's been around for a while but the mirrorless technology wins especially when you have an eye cup preview and also replay playback after you take your footage because you will know right then and there if you have what you were looking for to get in that photo. Once you start using that, it's really hard to get away from it. It really spoiled me. I love this feature. Let's talk reliability. Some of you guys may not agree. Some of you have may have a different opinion and that's okay. We all have our favorites. When I tested other brands over the years, no brand gave me the reliability that Canon has. I've always had success. I remember there was a different brand that we tested we were quite excited about, we thought it was quite good, and then we arrived at destination probably six, seven hours away from our house, only to realize that that camera was just losing battery life so fast. And that entire trip, we couldn't get good video and good photo because of that. And some other things too. So Canon, over so many years of use, whether I was shooting with DSLRs and now using mirrorless and tried other cameras in between. I think we even had the little power shot back in the day. It's always been so reliable. It's, it's kind of like a brick. You just, you almost can't break it. And this is why I really, really like the Canon brand and I kind of stick to it, even though we've tested other brands. So if you're not biased to a, to a specific brand yet, Give it a try, see what you like, see what works for you. If you wanna see you know, what's a better setup for you. But for us, Canon always wins. This is another Canon brand feature that I really like and I'm sure that other brands have their own, but I really like the user interface on this Canon. It's such a simplistic way when you look at their software and how it's built, it's so easy to understand, it's not complicated. And once you learn the Canon interface, you can pretty much pick up almost any kind of camera and shoot because it will be so familiar to you. I hop back between this one, JC's camera that he's filming on right now. What do you have? M6. M6. And his doesn't have an eye cup, but it has a ton more benefits for filming video. So he has that too. 
and whenever I touch his camera I know what to do when I touch my DSLRs or other people want some pointers and some help with their Canon I can just grab it and easily explain it because all Canon cameras are so similar to each other with the setup and also their software. The color science, processing, and focus for our dogs in this camera is amazing. I know some brands are catching up to that now and their focus is starting to get better, but Canon's focus has been spot on from the beginning, even with this camera too. I was so happy that I can finally shoot and I have to worry when the pups are running towards me that things are gonna be out of focus. Sure, you'll get one or two here and there, but the accuracy and the amount of in-focus photos, because I do shoot in RAW, mm -hmm. and I do shoot sometimes even in manual, manual focus, the accuracy with this camera is absolutely incredible. Editing pictures afterwards in post is such a pleasure. I do love shooting our pictures almost perfect, if not perfect, when it comes to being in camera right away. I don't like to do a ton of editing unless I'm going for a specific look and feel. So having, a, uh, so having Canon, the color science just feels to me different for many years now. And I really like the reliability, the accuracy. It's not heavy on magentas. The hues are nice. And if you're shooting in RAW and you practice and you know what you're doing, you just you get perfect photos out of this camera. And I really, really like that. I do not like having to take our pictures and sit there hours in Lightroom trying to make it look like I wanted to on scene. So a quick little preview of what this camera looks like. Obviously you saw the interchangeable lenses, the eye cup. You can also, you have a hot shoe here you can mount onto if you want to. And this camera also has a, an actual LCD screen. So if you like shooting LCD, you can. And I really like the way it twists around all the way and just pops back. Cause sometimes I would frame my shot in the eye cup and then I kind of pull back a little bit and I just use the screen to continuously shoot as the pups come toward me or whatever I'm doing. So having this LCD screen right here is so nice. It's an additional great feature to have. It gives me a better perspective too. When I look at the photo in iCup Preview complements it. It's kind of like a really nice back and forth system, but I definitely use this LCD, not just for shooting, but also for navigating the settings. It's, it's a really nice size too. It takes up the entire camera and I couldn't really ask for a better setup than what we have with this camera. I'm so happy with it and I think especially for some of you guys who are new to this, new to photography, this is going to be a really easy gateway into taking pictures that you can cherish forever from your entire family. On another note, if you are considering gifting someone a camera and they're, they love photography but they haven't really started shooting and they don't know, they're not familiar with anything yet, I highly recommend getting a mirrorless, a camera, a compact one like this or even this one because this is such a great starter point and it's way easier than using a heavy DSLR. And the price range is often cheaper on this one versus DSLRs, so I really recommend this for anyone that just begins photography. If I'm happy with it, and trust me, I was picky. I was pretty much married to that larger Canon, my DSLR. I could not think of using a different, a smaller setup and not a DSLR for everyday photography but I am so happy with it. I think so many people can benefit from the setup. I would highly recommend going with something like this over the Canon Rebel, for example. I think this is a way better setup for a hobbyist photographer and for a beginner photographer. It's so much fun. So another note, JC has been trying to convince me to upgrade our DSLR, our Mark, because the technology is starting to move pretty fast and things have improved a lot. Canon does have an R series, which has the mirrorless larger cameras that are like the DSLRs and some of them have even gotten beyond the DSLRs, which I'm really excited about testing in the near future. I'll have to really compare the two, see how they feel, see how they behave, see how the images, how the images come out because that's most important is the results. And sometimes when a technology is new, I don't trust it right away. I want to see fine tuning, perfecting, getting all the bugs out, but I know and I've read plenty to know that the Canon R series is definitely there, plus the amazing lenses that come with it. So I'll leave it included here also in the description of this video if you wanna check that out. Obviously it's mirrorless, but it's gonna be larger like the DSLRs, and of course they produce way more high-end results. 
So if you want to know what's the setup I recommend if you're going to do dog photography, especially outdoors, I really recommend this lens. You can get the kit lens that JC is using for filming. Now, what's your lens size? It is 15 I, to 45. Which is a really good size. 15 to 45 is really good. And that was the lens that the camera came with. It was, it made sense. It was a really good deal. But then JC took it from me because he likes using it for filming. But honestly, I don't regret it because I really like this 18 to 150. It's such a great lens. The aperture is pretty nice on it too. I have no regrets. I tend to shoot a lot with showing the background a little bit more when we're outdoors because everything is so beautiful. So I don't really need a super shallow depth of field, but I'm adding a couple of lenses that I'll also include here that has a way more shallower aperture that you may enjoy too. But honestly, if you're just starting out, the 18 to 150 is magic. You will love this lens and you'll probably also like the kit lens that JC just mentioned. So here are my three tips for dog photography. Number one, our dogs always come first. And what do I mean by that? It's not fair to start taking pictures of your dog and pushing your dog to take photos anytime, to be honest. Whether you're out on the trail or you're at home, you can snap candid shots of them. And I think those are amazing. Like I would snap one of Nikolai right now because he's just so freaking cute the way he has his paws. But when it comes to the outdoors, we never pull out my photography camera. Video is different because you can get candid stuff. But I never do posing type of shots before we've hiked at least for an hour. Because once they've had at least an hour, they have their energy out, they have their you know, all of that excitement out, they're more in tune, they're kind of zoning, and that's when they actually really enjoy the process. So when your dog is hungry, tired, hasn't had enough exercise or the beginning of exercise, that's not a good time to do it. You want your dog to be looking forward to it by having your dog's needs met first, and then after that, you can take pictures. Like right now, the squad is just hanging out with me, enjoying filming this video. They had their food, they're satisfied. They usually get really relaxed after they eat a nice raw food because that's their favorite. And this is a perfect time to relax with them. But if they were kind of in the mode of schedule, oh, I need to eat right now, this wouldn't be fair for me to expect them that they're just gonna sit here and relax with me. And the same thing goes for dog photography. Number two, a routine. Dogs are creatures of habit. We are creatures of habit. They know what's going on when we're gonna take pictures and video by now. They're really in tune with all of that. And building a routine really helps with taking pictures of our pups. So for example, by now they know that when I pull out my camera, it's picture time. There'll be treats, there'll be excitement, there'll be happiness and all of that. And they already know and they kind of get in that zone. So you need to build that same thing with your dog. I don't recommend starting right away on the trail because that's super advanced, right? So you want to start maybe in your backyard or on your balcony. When you start like you kind of pretend that you're outdoors somewhere, somewhere really nice, and you start building that routine with your dog to understand what does that routine look like when you start taking pictures. And the same thing with video. Pop saw the tripod there with a the video camera set up. They saw I'm kind of arranging things here. They already know we're about to start filming and they know they're gonna hang out with me. They may get a couple of snacks here and there. They get to chill with me. So they really know the routine and because it's a positive experience, they really look forward to it. And you can do the same thing with your dog. Start in your house, then you can go expand and go outside in your backyard or on your balcony. And then once they really understand, okay, camera comes out, we go get to have some fun, right? That's when you can add a little bit more difficulty with time. It's really, really worth it. Right, Yuna? Number three is your shutter speed. When you get this camera and you start playing with the manual settings and you get out of auto, which I really, really recommend, I recommend that you focus on shooting a speed that's meant for dogs. When I take pictures of our pups and I want to get the sharpest results possible, when they are in still mode, I shoot them at 250 minimum of a shutter speed. And when we're outdoors and we're taking those moving and action shots, we're at least at a thousand shutter speed. And when you're outdoors and it's nice and bright, though that's not a problem, you can work with the aperture, you can work with your ISO to compensate, and you can get those nice, crisp, sharp shots. So again, 
shoot at 250 when they're still because of their movement and shoot at at least a thousand shutter speed when they're active. There's so much that I can talk about and teach when it comes to dog photography and I really really like this subject. I'm always so excited to take pictures of the squad but I hope that these three tips gets you off to a good start. If you guys would like us to create a photography course and a photography editing course for dogs, let us know. We'll leave here in the description of this video a link where you can put your name. And if we get lots of requests, we'll do a photography and editing course for dogs. So be sure you add your name if this is something that interests you. If we get lots of those requests, then we'll definitely create something for you. Did you find this video helpful? Did you learn something new today? Did this video help you make a decision in some kind of way, whether you're buying yourself this camera or gifting it to someone else? Or did this video inspire you to take more pictures of your dogs? Let us know when you comment on our videos, what you like, what you enjoy. It helps us know what type of videos you want to see more of in the future. If you enjoy Doggo Life, be sure you go check out our main channel, Husky Squad, where you get to see all the amazing adventures we do with them, hiking, camping, traveling, cabin hopping, their food, you name it, everything is there. I'll leave a link here in the description of this video, or you can just go find Husky Squad and subscribe there. Patreons, thank you so much for supporting our channel. We really appreciate you. I really enjoyed filming this video for you guys, sharing our camera equipment, and I hope you enjoyed it too. And I look forward to see you next time on Doggo Life. Bye!